Should Saints fans limit the expectations for Clint Kubiak's offense? This is Off the Bench Overtime. Jacob Hester, T-Bob Bear, and Matt Flynn joining the show. A triple threat, if you will, a three-man band. If you will, Matt Flynn, of course, LSU, former LSU quarterback, uh, then played quarterback in the NFL. He infamously played in Green Bay, then had like a three-game stretch where he was really good. Maybe not even that, that long. Got like a $15 million contract from Seattle. Got beat out by Russell Wilson. Doesn't end up playing. He then ends up going back to Green Bay, then somehow signs another big contract with Oakland at the time for another like $15 million. So Matt Flynn somehow get, got himself like a eight, nine-year NFL career, made like $30 million, and uh, didn't really do much. So kudos to Matt Flynn. A wild contract in the NFL and sports in general. Really crazy when you look at some of these guys and and their career earnings and all that stuff. It's it's bananas and pajamas. But here then, um, why don't you, you know what? You're right. You're right, Matt. I'm glad you said this. Let's talk some sports. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Love it. How do you feel about Clint Kubiak, new Saints Love OC? It. Very happy. Yeah, Gary's boy. Yeah, that's right. How <laughs> that's do you feel about- That's way more than I thought you would know. Nailed that, didn't I? How do you, you feel did. about- I got a feeling about Jacob's response there, that Matt Flynn is not a, doesn't really care about the NFL. This is something else that people are blown away by. I've talked about it before. A lot of pro athletes don't care about sports. A lot of pro athletes don't watch their sport. They don't watch the NFL. They don't watch NBA players. Don't watch the NBA. Giannis Antetokounmpo from Milwaukee just said that he doesn't watch the NBA. You know, he, he does not watch anyone but his team. Happens all the time. So Matt Flynn, you know, probably played a decade in the NFL. Like I said, a quarterback his entire life. Most people probably think he's a guru, quarterback guru, knows all about NFL offenses. In that 10 seconds right there, I would assume he probably he probably watches maybe a handful of games throughout the year, but it sounds like he doesn't uh doesn't follow the sport very much. Motion. Because word on the street is he likes a lot of pre-snap motion. Yeah, he yeah, it's terrible. It's gonna be bad. They're not gonna be very good. What? Hmm. Interesting. It's not what I expected. Everybody that comes in with like all this motion stuff, unless you're unless you're that cat from Miami. It's all hey, it's all just like But he is Kyle Sh- Yeah, good news. Good news is that he is kind of like that cat from Miami, where he's coming from the exact same tree. Uh, no pun intended with cats known for getting stuck in trees. But he is the same idea. They are throwing the same dart at the same dartboard, right? They're just trying to hit the bullseye like Miami did with, with Mike B. Daniel. But same tree, same philosophy, same all that stuff. So when he's talking about the motion concepts that Mike B. Daniel has implemented in Miami, we're hoping that some of those concepts are implemented in New Orleans. Now, it's not going to be the exact same. Sean McVay isn't the same as Kyle Shanahan, who isn't the same as Mike McDaniel, who isn't the same as Clint Kubiak. Not saying that. Right? We're not We're not saying this is going to be a replication of the Miami offense, but it will be in the same vein. So it might not be the exact same concepts as far as the motion and all that goes, but it will be some of that innovation, some of that uh, progressive thought. So, and, that, and that's certainly what we need. We were bottom of the NFL in pre-snap motion, San Francisco way at the top with Miami. Shanahan, that's how we're supposed to approach this. I just, I see it's Clint Kubiak. Tree. I say Clint Kubiak, and then okay. I just say, I say that's actually Kyle Shanahan. Like, okay. I, th- I think Clint Kubiak's the reason why they actually made the Super Bowl this year. Okay. But Kyle Shanahan's why they lost, though. Not Kubiak. Mm-hmm. It's like saying Hester's sons are going to be great fullbacks because they came from the tree of Jacob. Uh. It's not, actually. It's nothing like that. This isn't the Old Testament. Uh, we don't have the Book of Jacob. We're not talking about lineage. We're not talking about bloodlines. What it would be like saying is that Jacob Hester's kids may understand the fullback position better than, say, my kids, which would make sense and would be completely true. I'm sure Jacob would be able to instill some concepts of his career playing fullback. I'm sure he'd be able to instill some concepts and ideas and philosophies or whatever that I would have absolutely no idea of. The Saints have basically created a philosophy or created a world. The hell is this? What's going on here? I mean, are Mars attacking? Is this a nuclear attack on my studio? What the hell is going on? I, I don't think that's like a crazy thing to say, is it? Well, fullback might not be a position by the time they get there, but that's I true. understand what you're saying. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, like, um, none of them play fullback. Yeah, I I don't like. So I was in one offense in the NFL that was like every play was a shift in motion or yeah. a shift or motion. I was in one for. Four it years. was brutal and it sucked. So you you're being legitimate and you're saying that you don't you don't you don't enjoy that for the quarterback. I, I, you know what's wild? Like, I mean. 
it's hard. It's really hard to hear this and, and try and like figure out what you can take from it. Because if you're here, like he's like Matt Flynn, former NFL quarterback, you got to certainly take his experiences and give him some credence for sure. Like he, you know, he played the game at a really high level and he's, he knows. So when he says those systems sucked, I didn't enjoy those systems, whatever. But then you look at what the NFL is now with Miami, with San Francisco, with all these teams doing it, and that is the way to win offensively. And you wonder, like, I mean, was it just not, was the systems he's talking about not right for the era he was in? Because I would say it's indisputable that right now, motion and all that is the way to win as an offense. Uh, Shifts and motions have a place and a time and a place. Motion certainly more than shifts. Um, especially if you have like really elite talent that you're trying to get really good matchups yeah. with. That's or we get were some more motion than shifts because we were trying to free up gates. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. And that's fine. But a lot of coaches just get into the, if there's a reason for what you're doing, like specific game plan reason, like you don't need to go into day one of training camp and all you're doing, the every single study hour minute that you have, is trying to memorize the names of all these shifts and all these motions. Well, I agree. I Okay, so he kind of walked back, or he kind of explained what I was saying there. Was, if he's saying that as long as the shifts and the motions and all this pre-snap movement, as long as it has a reason, it's good, I agree with that. And that's what I think is the best part of these offenses with San Francisco, Miami, Los Angeles, is that they do free up their weapons. That's the whole point of the offense. The whole point of the offense is we're going to free up whoever we're keying in on we're going to free them up, and we're going to get them the ball. And that's what allows San Francisco to have so much yak. That allows Miami to run the ball the way they run the ball. That is the goal. Like, that's what – if I had to put, like, a foundational explanation of this offense and this tree, it's use all this motion, use all this misdirection, use all this pre-snap movement to free up whatever playmakers the play is for and let them create after they get the ball. That's what we see with San Francisco all the time. Like, we see that with – Every single one of their players. That's why they always talk about yak with them. Is because when they get the ball, they are freed up. So if that's the case, which I think it is, then the pre snap motion does have a reason. It's not just motion for the sake of motion. Yeah, you don't there's no point in that. Uh, do you yeah. even Matt Canada? Bro? <laughs> yeah, Matt Canada is awful. I mean to your point. What are you like, talking about? Matt Canada's been in NFL C for years now. Yeah. Okay. Like it'd be like that, just because an NFL OC doesn't mean he's a good OC. Yeah. Big true. Uh, bunch <laughs> right blast the jack right. Yeah. You, so it's, it's real wordy. Because it'd be bunch right blast the jack right, 99 stop, F cross the M. Yeah. And like it's like, you got to remember our oh. blast is a bunch, and I'm here and I'm going to jack. And Blast yeah. before jack? Yeah, because you'd be bunch the right Pause? and you'd blast, which is the movement, mm, okay. to jack right, okay. which is fullback offset to the tight end side. I hate to say it for, me, for all you Saints fans. I mean, you don't want seven, eight games. It's going to be fun when you win. It's not true. We hired Keith Williams as wide receiver coach. You even know about Keith <clears throat> Williams? I cannot handle the irony. Like I, the, the, the layers and layers of irony that I'm watching right now are blowing my mind. I mean, what an insane concept from the producers. Like, let's bring, let's bring Matt Flynn on, who seemingly doesn't like the NFL, who seemingly doesn't, you know, could care less about the topic at hand. Let's fill the radio show with that. An interesting, controversial yet brave for sure. I do, let, let me let me let me back it up. If you are here's the big foundational piece from this video. If you are focused on Clint Kubiak, if you are focused on him as a play caller, if you're focused on him as an OC, you're missing the point. The point is the Saints could have stayed in the same world. They could have stayed in the same realm. They could have kept kept everything really, really safe. That is how you get stagnant. That is how you get in purgatory, NFL purgatory, like people keep saying. That's how you stay average. What the Saints are doing is they've basically made us a promise, the fans and, and everyone else. They basically said, we agree that this hasn't been good enough the last couple of years. This has not been good enough, both results-wise and the product we're putting on the field as far as like watching it and how they play. They agree. And so they've gone out there and said, We're, we'll clean house. We will clean offensively. We'll clean the house. We'll bring in fresh ideas, new ideas, completely new. If they work, 
we're going to be sweet. If they don't work, they have no choice but to clean house and bring in a whole new set of ideas, which is all right. That's what you want. What you want is either it works and you're good or get it out, bring in a whole new idea tree or whatever and see if that works until you find what does work. What you don't want is we're going to get John Gruden. He's an established guy. We're going to get Mike Sullivan. He's an established guy. And we're going to let them just kind of be average for five years, six years. That's not, that is not what you want. So like I keep hearing all this stuff about Clint Kubiak and Clint Kubiak is the OC. He is the name, but it's more, I'm more excited about the philosophy the Saints are showing. I'm more excited about the, the, and don't look at me like that, Matt Flynn. I'm more excited about this promise from the Saints of we're not going to sit here and settle for being average. We're not going to sit here and settle for in off in house ideas or in house promotions or any of that stuff. We're going to go take a chance. We're going to take a risk, and we're going to move this thing forward until it works. And if it doesn't work, fine, it doesn't work. I would much rather that. I'd much rather take a chance if we were going to make it, if we were going to turn like take it into a player like a player kind of idea. Same thing with Derek Carr, where I would much rather go get Carr, go get a guy who you think is a top 10 whatever quarterback, go pay him the money, go do that, then keep things safe and just run it back with Andy Dalton or run it back with Jameis Winston or run it back with Taysom Hill. And if Carr doesn't work out, fine. Go get the next quarterback. We'll bring someone else in. It's not about the the individual. Like the Derek Carr signing isn't about Derek Carr as much as, as it's about the idea of the Saints saying, no, we want to be relevant. We want the quarterback. We want to be good. And they go try and get car and see how it works. Same with Kubiak. So I, they, like, I would temper everybody. If you're typing up in the comments right now, if you're like, Clint Kubiak is this, or Clint Kubiak wasn't the OC in San Francisco, or Clint Kubiak calls these kind of plays, like try and take a few steps back, remove yourself from Clint Kubiak as an individual and look at it more of the what they're telling you from the Saints front office, what they're telling you as a fan. And the thing you'll find is that they're telling you what you want to hear. They're telling you, they're agreeing with you. So this is a very exciting time to be a Saints fan. And it's insane to me that Matt Flynn can, I mean, well, I mean not, not that, you know, not that his opinion on the Saints record carries any weight in my world, but... It's crazy that someone can just be like, no, Saints will be, they'll win seven games. They'll win eight games. It's like, why? You know, why would, why? I mean, they might, and they might win seven or eight games, but but just saying that is nuts. And it's not, it's not about next season's results. Next season's results are a very small snapshot in time. Just like this season's results were a very small snapshot in time. Just like the year before that and the year before that, right? It's all about the philosophy. It's all about, the strategy, the scheme, the plan, the vision, that's what's important. Well, it's not important to me of like, oh, they'll win eight games next year. We might win eight games next year. But if we win eight games next year and then we win 12 games a year after that, whatever. Yeah, that's fine. So the more I listen to this like narrative from Saints media or even some fans, I think some of the, like how how some people are looking at it, is a little misguided. And we, we got to kind of shift back to what's actually important and what's actually in front of us here. And thank God that I'm here. Thank God that I'm here to steer the boat, that I'm here to be the captain of the ship. And we don't have, you know, this this situation that I'm looking in front of me, we don't have this steering the ship and steering the boat. Because if that was the case, people wouldn't even watch the NFL. You know, the kind of apathy and the kind of, you know, what whatever kind of mindset we have here, of almost not even entertaining the idea that this could work, not even entertaining the idea that this could be the next Miami Dolphins, the next San Francisco 49ers, the next Los Angeles Rams, not even entertaining that possibility off the bat. We got, we got to get some positive energy. I mean, we got to get, they might need to crack open that Vizzy or crack open that blue moon light sky and get involved because I, I, I it's just so much negativity here. So there's, He's been an assistant wide receiver coach for the Ravens for the last three years, Matt. Okay? That's a good point. A good team. And before good that, squad. before that, he was a private wide receiver trainer that worked with the likes of Tyreek Hill That's and Devontae Adams. He's a good player. Tyreke, Your boy, basically, Devontae Adams. Tyreek and Devontae are on the Saints. Exactly. So, because you got Keith Williams. <laughs> basically. 
So until you make a wholesale change from the top to the bottom. So we're doing. You're y'all gonna, remember, you're not going to Y'all remember, agents. this man next to me played for Dennis Allen. No, <laughs> He's I know. tried to tell you but, something. But no, well, and Matt's already told us in this show before that the original sin really lies with Mickey Loomis. Yeah. It needs, it needs to be a wholesale change. Uh, which, Great guy. This is the start of a wholesale change. Like This is the start of that wholesale change. I mean, you can't get more... I mean, guys, you really can't get more of a wholesale wholesale change offensively than we than we have right now. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again: you couldn't expect the Saints to go get Derek Carr, sign him to a hundred fifty million dollar contract over whatever it was, three years, four years, and then after one season, fire six offensive coaches, including the coordinator, fire them, fire the head coach, which then in turn fires the DC which then in turn fires all the defensive assistants. Then in one-off seasons, you would have to go get a brand new head coach, a brand new OC, a new offensive staff, a new DC, and a new defensive staff. Oh, and all of that has to somehow link up with your $150 million, 33-year-old franchise quarterback who you just got. So the idea of this like wholesale change, top to bottom, get rid of everyone, get rid of Allen, get rid of all these people, that just doesn't make any sense. And it was never going to happen. And like we've talked about, Dennis Allen last year, analytically, we've shown it before. At the end of the season, he graded out as the best defensive play caller in the NFL. So I don't care what you think about Dennis Allen as a head coach. Is Dennis Allen a good head coach? No. He has been one of the losingest head coaches in NFL history. No doubt. But the guy can call defense. Bottom line. The guy's a hell of a defensive mind, hell of a defensive coordinator. Does that mean with Kubiak calling the offense and controlling the offense and having his own scheme and vision and all that, does that mean that it's going to work out and Allen's going to revitalize his career? Maybe not. Might not, right? But it'll make it much easier on Allen to do what he's good at than before when we had Pete Carmichael who couldn't even figure out how to turn on his headset. It doesn't mean, you know, doesn't mean anybody's a that bad dude. Happening. That ain't yeah. happening. So it is what it is. Yeah, seven, eight games. The, good, um, uh, nine, nine might be a really good year. Nine wins. That's what they had this year. Win a record. That would get everybody fired. They have to win. They have not to everybody. The playoffs. They have, well, no, according according everybody. to you, not no, everybody. You're right. No, that would not get Mickey Loomis fired. Then they'll but. just sign. Loomis ain't getting fired. And, I mean, you know, nine wins. Depends on how the wins are. But nine wins might get Allen fired. It depends. I mean, it really does depend. Like, if, if we, if our offense looks good, if our offense is better than it was this year, and our defense is better, and we win nine games, and that's kind of what I'm. That's kind of what I'm getting at is that if you told me, if you told me that our offense will be, will be better and our defense will be better, and we win nine games, like do I think that do I think everyone should get fired? No. If we're getting better, no, because then the next year, if, if everything's getting better, the results are going to come right. The, the results are going to happen. So, I, I don't know. I mean. I know they're kind of talking in circles, and I'm not, you know, I'm trying not to get too wrapped up in, in a lot of the, like the minutia, if you will. But, you know, I mean, very results driven. And I, I, you know, I understand he might not like Dennis Allen, and I understand that they may have a history or whatever. And, and will the Saints really win as long as Allen is the head coach? Maybe not. We'll know this year. I'll, I'll say that. We'll know this year because if Kubiak, if the offense works, and Allen is kind of freed up to handle the defense, and and we still don't we still have some cultural issues, or we still have some identity issues, or the players still don't seem happy, or you know the 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 vibe is off, kind of how it was this year. Then we can kind of track that to maybe Dennis Allen isn't the guy to be the the, the head coach, like he's not the voice, you know, and that and that certainly can be true. That certainly can be a real thing where you know he's just not the right leader to take this team to the next level. That, that certainly can be a thing. Well, there you go, guys. It looks like the Saints are actually going to suck, according to Matt Flynn. <laughs> Way to go. I mean, it's not a bold prediction. This, this, is, this whole is that season. a bold prediction? Uh, I think. No. I didn't say they're going to no. suck. No, not so a they were gonna, That's the problem, though. Said they're going to They're mildly, not good, they're and they don't stink. suck enough to be able to go out there and get a top quarterback. <laughs> what do you do about Demario Davis? Well, hold on. Let's back up. So that kind of is – going back to what I'm talking about. The idea of this like average purgatory situation by bringing in a whole wholesale change at, at the offense and bringing all that in, 
you do kind of open yourself to possibly being bad enough if all of it doesn't work to go get the, the quarterback and all of that. So that that's kind of what I'm saying. Where like they they've made a promise that they're they're willing to take the risk of it not working and having to make all these big changes. They're willing to do that in order to find the success. So the Saints are taking on tremendous risk by the changes they made so far in the offense the, uh, in the offseason. And I think we have to applaud them for that. You know, they're I would rather them take on the risk than not. That's what I'm saying by this philosophy. This is much different. I mean this is completely different than the philosophy 2 years ago. Philosophy 2 years ago was don't rock the boat, right? Don't take the risk. Keep it in house. Pete Carmichael, Dennis Allen. You know, uh, we can, you know, backups, whoever, Jameis Winston, Taysom Hill, like, so same thing. That that was a completely different philosophy. So within two years, the same decision makers, Mickey Loomis, the front office, have completely changed that and said, we went from no risk to now let's take some risk. And I'm applauding them. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know in the comments below what you think about this conversation. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.